talking today is Alan Ryan. Alan is the CEO of the Hargraves Institute for Innovation. Alan is one of Australia's leading authorities on innovation and leadership um, and has a long career in leading organisational change. Now, Alan will speak about it, the innovation process and the importance of leadership. So, welcome, Alan. Thank you, Zoo. Um, firstly, I'd like to recognise that the Department of Primary Industry, Environment and Primary Industry is a member of the Hargraves Institute and it's been a member for over five years, and I thank them. I also would like to thank the, the Food Innovation Australia Limited. Uh, they're also a member of the Hargraves Institute, so we've done a lot of work around the food sector. And I'm going to speak to you today from my experience in food and produce, uh, primarily working with Produce Marketing Australia, PMA, and doing some work uh, in New Zealand. I'm not a fruit expert, I'm not a produce expert, so I'm going to talk generally about innovation um, and how industries change for success. That's my plan for the presentation uh, today. So when you think about things and you see people either in the newspaper or on TV that are incredibly successful or even in the street of the town where you see someone who's far more successful than you are, you always consider, why are they successful? What's the secret that they have that can help me? My job at Hargraves is to find out those secrets by interviewing those people and then sharing those secrets uh, widely to help everybody improve. And the immediate thing people say to me, and so why would someone who's successful share their secrets with you? And the answer is very simple. I then can share 50 other successful people's secrets with them. So if you give me one, I'll give you 50 back. And that's how Hargraves operates. So I want to share two secrets with you today and then talk about innovation. The first secret to successful businesses, and we've now researched over 100 of them, is they just have to be in the right place at the right time. It's more to do with timing than you think. When you think of Steve Jobs at Apple and launching an iPhone, was it the fact that he launched the iPhone, or was it the fact that the phones went, and everyone was buying phones at that particular time? Or Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, was it the fact that he did Facebook, or was everyone getting on the internet? Right now, is the absolutely perfect time for fresh produce to become the biggest growing industry in Australia. When you look at what's happening in Asia and the growth of the middle classes, you have got an untapped potential. This graph here shows you the rise of the middle class in Asia and in China and India. There are hundreds of millions of people in China and India that are far wealthier than anybody in this room. And they don't want to eat food that is manufactured in China and India anymore. They want to eat fresh food with providence from somewhere that's different. There's somewhere that they know is safe. The first rule about being a successful organisation is you've just got to be there at the right time. The second rule is you can't do it by yourself. If you don't do it as a community, you're going to get whooped because they are. You will not be successful unless you work as a community in the world market. Forget the local market because the world market's 10 times bigger than the local market. Unless you work as a community, forget it. This is the famous saying, and I think everyone would have heard this say, you know, insanity's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Has everyone heard that one? Albert said that 70 years ago. What I say today is this one. Insanity's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results. And the reason why I say that is because the world is changing so fast that if you guys try to succeed by doing what you did yesterday, tomorrow, you will fail. If you think about what you were doing as a business 20 years ago, compared to what you imagine you're gonna to have to do 20 years in the future, it is going to be completely different. Now, I'm an old guy. When I started my career, we didn't have a computer, we didn't have a fax machine, we didn't have a phone. All those, we didn't have the internet. Does anyone feel the same way? If you then think of what's gonna happen in the next 20 years, we will still have, and I've seen them, these robotic things going around picking apples that check every apple um, with cameras to make sure the apple's absolutely perfect. So when you pick it, and if the apple's not perfect, you leave it on the tree, then pick it tomorrow. That sort of technology exists today that never existed 20 years ago. Can you imagine what we're going to be doing in 20 years' time? If you do what you do today, it's not going to be successful tomorrow. 70% of Australia's top 100 companies since 1990 are no longer in Australia's top 100 companies. 
I know that Shepparton has gone through a huge change and I know there are lots of issues with SPC and I actually have done some work for SPC and I'm very good friends with Coca-Cola and we've worked with Coca-Cola and I understand all the issues behind that. That's just normal business. In the last 20 years, 70% of our biggest companies have felt the same pain that you guys have felt. It's just what happens in business and change. So what does successful innovation look like? Peter made the point that he wants to make you more successful and innovation is the most important thing and this is the secret. I've studied innovation now for nearly two decades and I've summarised it down into three slides. So, this is the power of computing from 1900 to 2100, from a really, really small number on this side to a really, really big number up there. Have people heard of a thing called Moore's Law? The power of computers double every 18 months or the price halves every 18 months. It was invented by Gordon Moore in 1963, who was the managing director of Intel. He noticed it, said, geez, look at that, that's cute, and he called it, and it was named after him. It's been correct since 1963. And so when we go to the next one, you can see all the different computers over the 100 years from a really, really small number to a really, really big number, and you can see all the different types of computers starting off with the Apple II, et cetera, et cetera. How do they do it? And this is the secret. The secret is when they invent a new computer chip, they put it inside the computer that invents the next computer chip, that goes inside the computer that invents the next computer chip. The way you get exponential growth is by doing lots of little things right with a common vision. That's the secret to innovation success. Not doing big radical stuff and changing and risking everything, it's doing lots and lots of little things together right with one common goal. That's how you become successful. Exponential growth comes from lots of small things, not big things. Here's the share price of Apple. That's the US dollars. There's 1993 when they were bankrupt through to 2011 or so when they were the most wealthy, biggest company in the world. That's called exponential growth. Simple rule, you can write this one down. Wear the same shirt and jeans for 20 years yeah. and you'll be successful. <laughs> What that guy did, and yes, he was smart, and yes, he was at the right time, common vision, and he worried about every little thing and got every little thing right for 20 years in a row. And yes, it took him a while to get his act together, but away he went. This, I know it's a famous Australian song, and it's a country song, and it's the formula for innovation. And when I say that to people, they go, yeah, but it's hard still. Yes, it is. But I prefer you to do something small and miss something small than miss something big. Don't bet the farm on innovation.